Hey guys, for this video we're gonna talk about the piercing horror story. Okay, uh, he said lip piercing horror story. First of all, disclaimer, it's not the piercer's fault at all. It was my fault. I was stupid. <laughs> and another is I'm not an expert. I'm just speaking from personal experience. Okay, I'm not a piercer or anything. And another warning is that this is gonna be gross. It's gonna be a little bit graphic and I'm gonna describe some things in a way that's a little bit too detailed. Okay. Got it pierced. Everything was fine. Swelled for about two weeks. And then I did salt soaks. I used mouthwash that's alcohol free. I brushed my teeth right away after meals. I avoided spicy foods for about three months, which isn't really a problem because they scare the crap out of me anyway. And sorry, I'm looking at an outline because <laughs> I don't want this video to be 17 minutes long. I basically avoided anything that involved intensely like movement of the mouth. And in mid-August, I was on the street. Okay, here, here's the part that might make some of you cringe. Okay, so mid-August, I got my piercing done around like June, like early June. I was walking around with my mom from the gym, and they were giving away free milk tea in like this little cup, these little cups, and I was like. That looks good. It's free. It's milk tea. Why the heck not? So I was like, thank you. I was like... When I pulled it back, because I had a flat back stud at the time, it got stuck at the end of my flat back. So when the lip got caught when I pulled it like that, and it hurt so bad. It was like the kind of pain that you feel D the it's delayed and you're like ow that hurt why how did that happen Ugh. and next thing i know i feel warm sensation and blood okay it wasn't like a lot of blood but i could tell that there was blood because it was like warm and moist in that area and yeah so i had to start doing salt soaks again a bump started to grow on the back picture over here and that's not even how bad it looked when it was at its worst so it was honestly so embarrassing because <laughs> imagine being a freshman at university with people you barely know and every it's bad enough that i look like this and i dress different from other people so imagine when I'm talking, you can see like a growth on the inside of my lip when I'm talking, like, and you can see it. It's, it was just so distracting. And it didn't help that every time I smiled, because it was a long Libre flat back, you could see almost the whole stud like stick out of my mouth because it was a starter piercing. It looked like a trombone. It was really weird. And... <laughs> this is gross, okay? I don't... Please don't do this. Like, please don't. I, I did this. It was really disgusting. I bit, like, a part of it because I was so embarrassed with myself that I couldn't take it anymore. And it, the swelling wasn't going down and everything. It wasn't going away. It was hypertrophic scar tissue. And I just bit off a chunk of it. And you know what? It kind of went away, but not completely. It was still there. And that's when I was like, you know what? I have no idea what to freaking do. So I went to nopullpiercingdiscs.com because I saw on Reddit and like some piercing posts that that's what people use to heal piercing bumps on different types of piercings. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna order like, two packs of the small one and the bigger one for my double helix and my lip piercing 
I waited for about two months. They said it was gonna arrive in like a month. So I panicked a little bit. I emailed them, I said, do you have any update on my package? Where is it? And they were like, it's not scheduled to arrive until some blah, 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 some date. But we know that our customers are anxious, so here's a full refund. And if you do receive the package, then just consider that a gift for the inconvenience. And I was like, they're so sweet. That is a company that actually cares about their customers. And no, this is not sponsored, unfortunately. I'm still broke. But yeah, <laughs> no pull piercing discs. Amazing. And I went to the local piercer in my area, PNP Tattoo, and I had them place it when I still had my flat back. And it disappeared within like two months, but within like two weeks, you could definitely tell that the swelling was going down. There were times when I could feel that it would sting a little bit, but I think that's because it was being pushed. Also, a lot of the times, it, it's not like it caused any big damage or anything, but there, were, there would be times, especially when I first got it, where I would accidentally bite down on the back of the piercing. Like, when I'm eating, I'm like... And when I go like... I could like... Ugh. It's a weird sensation. Anyways... So, yeah, it took about two months before it fully disappeared. I had it changed into a horseshoe, not this one. This one is like a bigger horseshoe that it twisted from another piercing shop that I got. Anyways, I had it changed into a horseshoe and ever since it's been well. So yeah, that's the horror story. And now my piercing is healthy. The end. So now for some tips. Be sure you don't need to hide it because it's hard to hide, especially if you're still healing. Especially now when everyone's wearing masks and everything, you really wanna keep it as dry as possible. And that's a little bit difficult when you're gonna keep ripping a mask on and off your face. So consider that. As for any new piercing, try not to bump it, pull it, or touch it as much as you can, and never, never let anyone touch it except the piercer wash your hands if you want to touch it if you really got to change it once it's healed but don't go around saying like hey look at my new piercing do you want to touch it and they're like oh yeah and they just start like fiddling around with that's really disgusting you have no idea where that's been that could have been from their ass or something you know okay <laughs> uh what else let me see don't change it prematurely it will just irritate your wound and form scar tissue and you'll get an infection or a bump. So just don't. Don't skip brushing your teeth three times every time after you eat. Salt soaks one to two times a day until you feel like it's healed enough maybe about two to three months for five to ten minutes. And okay so what I did was, I would get like a cup, a mug, fill it with water, just enough water, and put a one eighth of a teaspoon into the warm water, and just, I don't have a mug. Let's pretend that this is a mug, okay? So you're like, like that, for like five to ten minutes. It really helps, speeds up the healing process. That's what I did for my septum piercing as well. I'm not wearing it right now, but it really does help. And do not expose it to too much direct sunlight. Keep the outside as dry as you possibly can. Which is a little bit of a challenge, especially if you're wearing lip balm. Just try to not let it get into the piercing site itself, because you could end up with an infection. Moisturize <laughs> your lips all the time, especially two weeks after you get it pierced. I recommend Aquaphor or petroleum jelly, anything unscented, basically. Try to avoid things that could plump up your lips, like as much as possible go for unscented ones. Try to avoid menthol as much as you can, just stick to basic stuff because I'm telling you, okay, I, I might show some photos 
at the end or now of the progression of the swelling of my lip piercing and until now I still have like a dry patch that would come sometimes I don't know if that's normal or whatever but because I also have lip eczema I just need to constantly put lip balm and aquaphor even when I sleep so especially in those first two weeks crucial or else your lips are gonna crack crack okay avoid playing with it and moving it around while it's healing it'll just delay the process I know it's tempting as heck to go like you know like just pull it and stuff I do that all the time especially when I still had class I learned to stop doing it when I got when when ECQ started because it, it was starting to get annoying I could feel like the friction on my lips it wasn't it wasn't an enjoyable sensation <laughs> and be careful when you eat. Like I previously mentioned, there's a possibility that you could bite down on it, especially if you get pierced with a bar. Make sure the ball doesn't fall off. Make sure your piercing, you know, really screws it on tight. Make sure you know the gauge size so that when you buy jewelry, you won't get confused. And yeah, make sure as much as possible, don't get pierced with anything that isn't a flat back and let your piercer change it once it's healed. Again, it's just to make room for the swelling, but if your piercer does tell you anything else, then go ahead. It's just from my personal experience, it's way easier to heal a flat back, a piercing with a flat back. And I'm talking about lip piercings, okay? Don't like get like, I don't know, like an eyebrow piercing with a flat back. Like, please don't. <laughs> Gum recession is inevitable. Make sure the angle of the piercing doesn't bother you too much. If, you, if it bothers you, tell your piercer. Cause, okay. This is gonna be a little gross, okay, warning. See this tooth right here? Look how this gum is already receded. Okay, that was like, a, that was not a flattering angle, but the things I do to inform you guys, basically the flat back kind of like made the gum recede a little bit but you know it didn't hurt or anything but it's it's concerning especially if you have snake bites avoid getting makeup on it i didn't put makeup for like a long time maybe like four months i tried my best not to get lip gloss on it either because i wore a lot of lip gloss last summer okay lastly lastly never get anything pierced with a gun Always go to a piercer for questions or advice about a piercing you already have because they should know what to do, especially when there are complications. That's it, guys. And as usual, I'm going to show you my pier uh, my, pier <laughs> my earrings. Look how cute they are. They came in today. Thank you, mom. And the other side is the handcuff. I mismatched them. Follow me on Instagram at bulletsthetic. Like, sub, tap on that notification bell to get notifications every time I post a video <laughs> but as usual it's on 12 p.m. on Sundays Philippine time I don't know what the GMT thing that is and <laughs> yeah leave a comment down below for any video suggestions or anything if you want to show support whatever <laughs> yeah go ahead check the description box below for the links to my music channel SoundCloud Bandcamp and my Spotify pre-save and follow campaign. Serial Dater is out on June 6 on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, and other music apps. And I'm working on getting it on YouTube soon. Serial Dater, Dater. Serial Dater is my first song that I'm ever going to release. Hopefully more to come. I'm gonna work on some stuff. And yeah, I genuinely appreciate all the support I'm getting right now. And my hair is going to my lips. I genuinely appreciate all the support I'm getting right now, especially for my music. It means a lot to me that you are all supporting me. And we're more than halfway to 100 subs, so let's push for 100. And let's push for good mental health too. Because, you know, everyone needs good mental health. So that, that's all, guys. Take care. See you around. See you next Sunday. Bye. You know what I want to f-
friggin' know? Why does my hair always want to piss me off when I'm shooting? Like, I swear when I get up, it's like, dang, I have nice hair today. And when I show up on camera, it's like, hello, I didn't shower for eight months, you know?